Welcome to a live stream of a very special edition of the Your Next Mission video podcast. What we now know as the U.S. Army was formed 247 years ago on June 14, 1775. So today, we celebrate the Army's birthday and the millions of men and women who have served and continue to serve. Today's live stream is proudly brought to you by Cavalry Agency, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilley. Hello out there, veterans and families, and welcome to a special live Your Next Mission podcast as we celebrate the Army's 247th year birthday and to help me uh, celebrate, uh, I'm so excited to introduce the 40th and current Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, and the Sergeant Major of the Army's Executive Officer, Sergeant Major Charles W. Albertson, joining us from the Pentagon. Welcome. So good to have you on the show. Well, it's great to be here, Sergeant Major. As you said, it's the 247th uh, birthday of the United States Army, and I like it because it's 24-7, and that's what the Army does Every single day is protect this great nation with our great soldiers. <laughs> well, sir, you know, I, I know the audience. We have a, a lot of topics we want to cover here. And uh, before we do that, can each one of you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? And, sir, would Chief, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'll just tell myself, I, if, if you didn't notice, um, I'm, I'm from uh, uh, Quincy, Massachusetts, just south of Boston. That's actually where we stood uh, the Army up. And uh, very blessed to be the son of a second-class petty officer in the United States uh, Navy and you know, and that would be a sergeant in, in, in today's army. And uh, he inspired me to serve. And I've had the chance to serve the last 41 years in the army with the world's greatest soldiers. And, uh, you know, when I take look at the army, what a, what a great place to start. It's a great place to serve. And for me, it's a great place to finish. <laughs> you know, I have 36 years. You got me beat for quite a bit right now. Hey, Sergeant Major Alves, how about yourself? Uh SMA is good to be here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just say that SMA Grinston uh, sends his regrets. He wishes he could be here, but asked me to uh, say some uh, things on his behalf. Uh, I've been his XO for about two years now, and I've certainly uh, gained an appreciation for what this building does and what the Army headquarters does for our soldiers and the, the military. Prior to that, I was the 18th Airborne Corps and 10th Mountain Division Sergeant Majors and quite a bit of time in the 75th Ranger Regiment. So I've really been able to broaden my horizons up here in the in the Pentagon. Oh, uh, well, again, so good to have you on the show. You, you know, the Army birthday is a very special day for all of us who served can each of you tell us a little bit, you know, what the Army's birthday means to you, uh, Chief? Start with you. Yeah, to me, it's a it's a celebration. You know, we cut the cake today, and in fact, we actually started out at Arlington National Cemetery uh, doing a wreath ceremony, and we had a chance to go over there and honor all of our fallen heroes, and we all strive to live up their legacy uh, every single day. And and when we see what this Army about, you look at this history. The Army's history is America's history. In fact, we were here before the country. And we have extraordinary young men and women doing incredible things every single day to protect this nation. I'm just so proud to serve with them. Who, uh, Sergeant Major Alveson, same same question. Yes, sir. I, I think uh, it gives us an opportunity to reflect on the last year and just what the Army has done. And, and it's really impressive to see, you know, comprehensively everything that the Army does every day you know, in response to whatever the, the nation calls us to do. And I think it's also an opportunity to reflect on uh, how honorable it is to serve our nation and the privilege that it is to wear our nation's cloth. Oh, no question about that. You got me motivated right now. I'm probably going to jump out of this chair. You know, the Army has been extremely busy for the past uh, year, just like the past 246 years. What would you like to, Chief, what would you like to tell the American public uh, that they want them to take away from what the Army's been doing for the last year? Yeah, I think, you know, what, what's, what I've found extremely uh, interesting about the Army, we're, we're certainly overseas, uh, you know, reassuring allies and partners like we're doing in Eastern Europe. And, and I can tell you, I've heard a lot. And we always like to say when soldiers, where soldiers go, freedom follows. Uh, but, you know, I had a chance to go over to Lithuania Latvia and Estonia, and they are very, very concerned what is happening in Ukraine. And we put um, American soldiers on the ground over there to reassure them and what they were doing. And, and I think that really made a difference. It just showed me, you know, how great 
our soldiers are. But, you know, we've been at home, too. And our National Guard and Reserves are doing incredible things. You know, if you've got a vaccination from COVID, you know, the Army was, was had a lot to do with that. Our, our doctors, our medical professionals have been going to hospitals. They're standing up alternate health care facilities. Our National Guard is, is all over the country. Uh, almost like a Swiss army knife, you know, with the driving buses, going to nursing homes, just taking care of the American people. So what we've been doing, and I'm very, very proud of, is protecting uh, the world order around the world. And we, we're still in Iraq, we're still in Syria, we're still in Korea, at the same time, uh, protecting uh, our citizens at home. Yeah, a lot of times what I tell people is they really don't know what the army is doing because they're doing so much. And then, and I, God bless you for what they're doing, and uh, I, I absolutely love the Army. Sergeant Major, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, SB, I think, I think it, to the Chief's point, I think it's very easy to forget that we still have soldiers deployed in harm's way in Iraq, Syria, and Africa. We have advisors in 40 different countries across the globe right now. And despite all of that, we have yet to say uh, when we're called that it's too hard or we can't provide. We, we are ready, and we stand ready to support whatever our nation's needs are. Yeah. Sir, the, the major priorities of the Army is people, readiness, modernization. And I know you're going to love this question. What does people mean to you? Well, you know, people are uh, a greatest strength. They're our most important uh, weapon system. And, and we say people first in the Army, and we certainly mean soldiers. And we mean soldiers from all three components, our regular Army, our National Guard, and Reserve. We also mean families because we enlist soldiers, but we retain families. And so we really appreciate what our families do every single day to support our soldiers. We really appreciate our Department of the Army civilians. And the other thing that's really important for us is our soldiers for life. Those who serve, those who are retired, soldiers for life, like Sergeant <laughs> Major, that, that, that's talked to me. And I have to give them two missions. You know, what I ask my soldiers for life to do is to do two things, inspire and hire. Inspire other young men and women to serve, and we need that help, and we, we want to get the most, the greatest people to come in the Army and hire our vets when they come out. And so those are the two things we're giving you all. Well, you know, what I always tell people, you know, the Army changed my life and it saved my life because I, I absolutely love the Army. And, and if you're listening to the show today uh, and you haven't served, you ought to serve, for first of all, uh, because it's a great, a great profession. Sergeant Major, concerning modernization, what do soldiers have to look forward to in the upcoming years? Uh, SMA, I think uh, right now we're attempting to try to modernize an army that we haven't been able to do in over 40 years or we haven't taken yeah. the time to do. And I think, you know, as we uh, have this, the new squad weapon, uh, next generation squad weapon uh, and the E3B, uh, we're making changes in those uh, in those in the weapon systems and our training platforms in order to make our soldiers better. Yeah. You know, it's really funny when you talk about uh change in the transition. I came in the Army, I had an M14. I left the Army, they had an AR. So change, change is part of the Army's life. Sir, last week, the Army reactivated the Leveth uh, Airborne Division, Alaska. Can you explain the significance of the and the importance of that? And what would that bring to the Army and to, really to the soldiers of Alaska? Yeah, I, I, that was exciting for us. We had a chance to go up to Alaska, get some great soldiers up there, uh, an airborne brigade and a striker brigade. Uh, but what we started to do is recognize the importance of the Arctic. So we need soldiers who are masters of their craft in Arctic warfighting. You know, those that can go into the most extreme weather, those that can go into high altitudes, those that can go into mountains. And that's what those soldiers are going to do. So we picked a patch. We wanted a patch uh, of a unit with a history of valor in a history of innovation. And that's exactly what the 11th Airborne Division is all about. You know, very, very famous during uh, World War II for fighting in the Pacific. So that, that makes a lot of sense. So they have yeah. a legacy they need to live up. But the other thing about the 11th Airborne Division, a lot of folks don't know, is they did a lot of uh, work to develop the airborne techniques that we used before World War II. In fact, they did so much that they gave General Eisenhower the confidence we could actually pull off an airborne operation that happened later with the 82nd, the 101st, and D-Day. The other thing they did, again, I'm, I'm used to command the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, the 11th Airborne Division stood up as the first air assault division, and they developed Ugh. all the tactics, techniques, and procedures. Yes, and sir. eventually became the first air, air cavalry division uh, in, in Vietnam and did some incredible things. So we're kind of, you know, what I gave them is the mission, the call to action, to do the same thing when it came to Arctic warfare. They will be resourced. They will be trained to be the, our premier Arctic warfighters. 
Yeah. You know, I tell, I tell people all the time, when I came in the Army, we had eight divisions. When I left the Army, we had 10. So I, I like to see a division coming back. You know, one of the things I was just thinking about, uh, sir, when I served in the Army and as a Sergeant Major of the Army, what rank were you when I was in the Army, uh, as, as a Sergeant Major of the Army? Chief, what uh, rank were you? I'm, probably, what, I'm trying to think, you know, probably what, you know. 2000, 2004. So you figure 2004-ish, I was a colonel. I was command, I was lieutenant colonel and um, then a colonel commanding in the 1st Cavalry Division. In, in the <laughs> you know, that just means, uh, you know, I'm still kicking, still moving. And then again, for the people that are listening today, we have the best army in the world. And, and if you... And if you want to join the Army, you want to recruit into the Army, uh, call a recruiter, do something. We love the Army. Sir, uh, sir and Sergeant Major, why should someone choose to serve in the United States Army? Yeah, I would, I would say it's, it's a pathway to success. You know, and, and you think about it, I look at myself and, you know, again, I'm the son of a, a non-commissioned officer who, you know, spent three years in the Navy and then worked at the Boston Gear Works for 49 and a half years. I remember when I was 16 years old, I was working for the Quincy Sewage Department and we were shoveling stuff that you wouldn't want to talk about. <laughs> and I had a, you know, and, and people inspired me to go to school when I got a chance yeah. to go to school and I had a chance to serve. And, but I know so many people, and, and you know this, Sergeant Major, and Sergeant yeah. Major, you go around, you hear so many great stories where, you know, people came and got a chance to go to school for their first time. They got training, they got discipline, they got skill sets. And I would argue that no matter where you spend two years or 40 years, you want to do this. I, I had a chance to recognize the soldier of the year this year, and she was um, at um, Kabul during, you know, during the, the evacuation, just did mm -hmm. some incredible stuff for the 82nd Airborne Division. And I asked her why she went in, in the Army. And what she said was she didn't want to leave this life without having an impact. And yeah. if you got a chance to serve, she's going to have an impact. And as we know, you know, when I, I've had a chance, you know, spent a lot of time in the 101st Airborne Division. I know a lot of the original band of brothers. And, you know, to me, you know, when you're older and you and I fall into that category, Sergeant Major. Um, oh, I'm, a, I'm probably a little bit older than you, but go know, ahead. You know, when your kids and your grandkids ask you what you did with your life, you know, you yeah. pop out your chest, you know, and say, I served my country. I served in the Army. And no matter where you go, what you do, no one can ever take that away from you. You, you know, one of the things that I, I tell people all the time, uh, the successes I've had in life is because of the Army. Yeah. Uh, the Army, again, changed my life and saved me life, but, but it made me grow up and, and be a better man, a better citizen uh, for this country. So I, uh, I love the Army, and I, I, you know, I think I'm just like a lot of other veterans. They want to do all they can to make our Army better, and they want, want to let it grow, and, and it gets better and better every year. There's no question about that. Sergeant Major, same uh, same question. What about, uh, uh, you know, why should somebody join the Army, I guess? Well, uh, first of all, I would say when you were the Sergeant Major of the Army, I was a platoon sergeant in the 2nd Ranger <laughs> Battalion. So uh, <laughs> There you go again. Well, I probably shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I would agree with, with the Chief's comments. You know, I didn't want to look back in my life and, and regret not having served. Um, but I think uh, also to go along with that, um, volunteering to serve, but it's also volunteering to stay and the commitment to retain our soldiers and our families. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for our soldiers to serve. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, different career fields and we have a lot of even reclassing opportunities right now for our soldiers. We still have about 6,000 soldiers el eligible to reenlist and we need those soldiers and families to stay committed, uh, not just come in. Coming in and serving is fine. You know, I agree with the chief, whether you do three or 30 years, you can look yourself in the eye for the rest of your life and, you know, in the mirror and say, I'm a great American. But I also know we need we need those people to commit, um, you know, and, and it's a family commitment. That's a commitment, not just as a as a service member, but the whole family. You know, there's there's something uh, there's a special bond of people that serve in the military, whether or not you serve two years or 20 years or, or 41 or 36 years like myself. And I, I tell people all the time that uh, I can call somebody I haven't seen in, in, you know, 15 years. And it's like I talked to him yesterday. You know, Chief, I wasn't going to ask you this question, but uh, we got plenty of time. If you are, it, you are the king in my book, you're the king, right? So if you was king for a day, what would you like to see uh, the Army do in the future? I mean, what, what kind of changes or or technology or equipment things would you like? And then Sergeant Major, same question for you. If you ask King for today, what what really does the Army need? Or, or uh, how? I guess the other question is how could the how could veterans help you just a little bit more, especially when it comes to recruiting? 
Well, you know, two things is one is I, I think we're going under the the biggest transformation in 40 years. And I go back to you, Simon, May. you and I were around. I've been around a little over 40 years. Mm -hmm. when I take a look at the Army. The Army needs to transform every 40 years. It did in 1940 when uh, General Marshall was running the Army right before World War II. And basically we used that Army into the late 70s and early 80s. And, and when you and I were running around during that time frame. You think about it, that's when the all-volunteer force came in. That's mm -hmm. where earlier battle happened. That's when really the major weapon systems we have, the Abrams tank, the Bradley, the Apache, the Blackhawk and Patriots, they all came into being. And now we find ourselves in, in, in past 2020, and we're doing the same thing in the, in the Army right now. We're changing our doctrine from earlier battle to multi-domain operations. We're building new organizations, the multi-domain task force, the security force assistance brigade. Um, we're changing, changing the way we train using uh, artificial and augmented uh, reality uh, to help us train. But the big thing is you see, and in, in, in Sergeant Major talked a little about six modernization priorities, your long range fires, next generation combat vehicle, future vertical lift, the network, air and missile defense and soldier lethality. So we're bringing in a whole bunch of new systems uh, for our soldiers to use and, and make sure that we maintain, you know, the best army in the world. And, and having said that, the reason it's people first in the army is we're in a war for talent. We want the best people to come into the army. And all of a sudden, when you've been in units with the best people, you, you really, you, you can't beat it. There's no better when you have a cohesive team of great. Yeah. People. So we want great people to come in the army and we've got to recruit for them. We, I mean, we got to, we, we got to compete for them. They have a lot of talent. And just like the Sergeant Major said, is once they're in, we need to take care of them. And we got to make sure they're being treated with dignity respect. And, and we want them to stay, especially the really good ones. Yeah, absolutely. Sergeant Major, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I completely agree with the Chief. I think it also goes along with Soldier for Life. You know, as we um, uh, want folks to have a good message for the Army, you know, you asked what can can former service members do for us? I think we've got to really work on the image of the Army and and what it means to serve and how honorable of a profession that is. And, you know, whether it's career skills programs or, you know, how we treat people in the Army and how they leave, we want them to have a very positive uh, perspective of the Army so that there are micro recruiters out there all across the nation that are communicating to those kids that coming in out of the grocery stores and stuff that are interacting with former service members. We, we need them to carry that message for us that that serving is is something that's rewarding and that 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 you won't regret doing. It, you know, you'd be surprised when you go out and I, I still talk to you from Sergeant Major. I still talk to a lot of veteran communities and stuff. And every time I get into a conversation, somebody will say they'll they'll start talking to me uh, about their their time in the army, what they did, what their assignments were. So there's a lot of people out there that's, that's proud of the army and they want to do all they can. I think the the biggest problem sometimes is is just getting those people to uh, making contact with those people. It's hard because you got you know you got a real world merchants, a lot of things going on. You just can't reach out to them. And I just sometimes I wish there was a better way to you know to to contact or connect with your retirement community. I know it's tough and. You know, but that's just the way it is. But uh, you're, you're a chief from Sergeant Major. Your veteran community uh, absolutely loves the Army. So yeah. well, they'll do whatever they can to help you, no question about that. No, we appreciate that, Sergeant Major. And, and really, we're doing some stuff. We're working with some organizations, uh, and we're hoping to, to get a network that we can bring um, all our veterans and soldiers for life together. And, you know, cause a lot is still thirsty for information, you know, and, and a lot don't even know we need the help. And, and yeah. you know, what I'm trying to do is in the Sergeant Major's trying to do is, is reach out to our soldiers for life, our retirees and veterans and say, yeah. Hey, if you want to help, here's how you can help. And, yeah. and, and the reason I want to give them two things to do, inspire and hire, because they're retired or they're veterans. You can't give them three things. That would be too much. We just want to <laughs> And if they can only do one, what I want them to do is inspire. If they're too there you go. retired, just, to, just help us inspire young men and women. Because I think they're missing a great opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, I think that in the Army, you can do anything you want. You know, you can be anything you want to be in the Army. Yes, sir. And, you know, yes, we sir. have an old cliche about, you know, be all you could be. But, you know, it is it is true as can be. You can do anything you want in the Army you know, from being, an, an, you know, an elite infantryman, like the, you know, the great combat rangers sitting next to me, you can be uh, a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a pilot, uh, you can do artificial intelligence, you can be a cyber coder, you name it, anything you want to do, you can do it in the army, we will train you, we will take care of you, 
and you, you'll have a pathway to set. And oh, by the way, you know, GI Bill, education benefits, early retirement, all those type things that go along with being in the Army. Yeah, you, you know, I, I talk about the circle of life when I talk to a lot of people. You know, people stand in one circle, they never move. If you step out of that circle and go into the Army, it'll change your life. There's no question about that. It'll make you a better person, a better citizen, and uh, it'll it really set you up for the future. And again, any successes that I've had in life, I'm, I'm a small business owner, and I do a lot of different things, but but it's only because of the things that the Army and my parents and everything else, but but the Army really sort of you know got me in the right focus, got me in the right frame of mind to... Uh, to get in the right direction there. You know, first of all, I'm going to say it's it's been great talking to both of you, and and, and I want to be respectful of your time because you're a busy person. There's no question both of you are. Any final thoughts, anything you want to share with the audience, Chief, about it's just anything, table's yours, say what you want to say, to you know, to connect with our, our veteran community. Yeah, I just want to I, I tell you a story because we, we did a cake cutting ceremony uh, in the Pentagon today, and it was really pretty cool. We had all the troops in there, and they, they brought in the youngest soldier. And I look at the youngest soldier. He was 6'11". I mean, like, you're just an incredible young man. And so we get up there and talked about it. You know, we had all the senior leadership there. And I was talking about how great our soldiers were. And I go, you know, I'm not going to say our, I go, can we have the youngest soldier please stand up? And this kid is just a great, you know, young kid. Yeah. Eleven. I go, and I go, you know, I'm not going to say our soldiers are 10 feet tall, but they're pretty damn close. And that's <laughs> Oh, wow. Sergeant Major, any final thoughts? Anything you want to share with the audience? Ten foot tall. I, I was standing next to him, and I'm 6'2", and I felt short. So. Well, I'm about 5'9 and a half, so everybody's tall compared to me. There. The chief reenlisted nine service members at that ceremony as well, all compos, uh, guard, active, and reserve. And, uh, you know, as, as they're raising their hand to commit, you know, future service to our nation, I think it's a reminder to us all of, you know, raising that right hand uh, is not something to be taken lightly. And, you know, whether, like I said, you know, that f that first enlistment coming off the street or you've done it again and again, um, or you're watching people do it, it still touches my heart. Yeah. You, you know, uh, I, t I, I give little presentations every once in a while now, and I asked everybody to, to raise your hand and say, I will. And when they put their hand down, I said, hey, look, you know what the Army or the military does? They say, I'm willing to die for your freedoms. I'm willing to, you know, they're the ones that allow you to have all the freedoms that you you have each and every day. So, uh, you know, I just, I, again, I love the Army. I love what you're doing. And, and again, not just for me, but really for all the veterans that are out there, we got your back. Now, let me just tell you something. I got, I got something for you to do, Chief Sergeant Major. One little thing before you get out of here, and I know you want to get out of here. It's tradition in the Army now to cut the cake. So uh, there's a couple rules here with me. You got to stay with me a little bit, All right? Oh right. right, no, no, I'm not going to make you do anything. But uh, uh, here, right here, I got my cake. I got my army cake here, and uh, I, just in a second, I'm going to say one, two, three, and I want you to say happy birthday, army, who in a big pod. Now, don't you can't hold back. You got to be motivated, okay? All right, here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday, birthday army. army. Hoo -ah! Hoo -ah! Pumped up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chief Sergeant Major, thanks a lot for uh being with us today. Thanks a lot for what you do and and God bless you. Again, I'm not just saying that. I, I got your back and we got your back and we'll do whatever we can. And we'd love to uh, sir uh, Chief, every six months come on the show, talk to your veterans, talk to the community and and allow us to to be part of you because we want to be part of the Army as a veteran community. God bless you. Thanks, Sergeant Major, uh, and, and thank you for your service. Really mean that. And thanks for continuing to serve as a soldier for life. Amen. Absolutely. God bless you, sir. Have a great, a great Army Day. Hoo-ha! <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. You've been watching a live stream of your next mission podcast, and if you are pumped up, something's wrong with you. We asked all the veterans and soldiers and families to help us celebrate our Army's birthday by posting something motivating, inspiring, or from about their army, or even singing the army song like me. I sung the army song, and I got a lot of responses. Some, some of them probably not so good, but the, but the responses has really been amazing. And and thanks to everyone for participating. And and now we like to recognize the the most spirited post, the Maneuver Center of Excellence at Fort Benning and the Armor School on the 194th. 
As we head into our break, here's why they won. Good morning from Maneuver Center of Excellence, Fort Benny, Georgia. We here at the Armor School and the 194th Armor Brigade would like to wish the Army a happy birthday by giving them a serenade of the Army song. Happy birthday, Army. <laughs> You're watching Your Next Mission, proudly presented by the Cavalry Agency. They help brands dominate no matter their size. Ideas, strategy, action. This is Cavalry. Learn more at Cavalry.com. Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Purdue Global, providing affordable online education for hardworking adults. Learn more about a personalized, innovative, and world-class education at purdueglobal.edu. Veterans United Home Loans, the number one VA lender for five straight years. If you're buying, they're funding your dreams. Learn more at veteransunited.com. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. What a great dude this has been. And thanks again to General McConville and Sergeant Major Alverson for being with us today. And and I've got to tell you, I'm so pumped up uh, talking to the chief and talking to Sergeant Major and, and just thinking about all the people that I met in the United States Army and all the family members that uh, that are very special to me, and I'm certainly sure special to you. So again, God bless you. God bless this great Army. And uh, don't forget, uh, we're motivated to help the chief out and uh, do all we can. And as always, see you on the high ground. hoo You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.